Well, hey everybody, it's Atlan. How's it going? And I've just realized uh, as I'm getting ready to pack for a trip to the Red River Gorge next weekend uh, that I have not done a video on my lightweight loadout in quite a while. It's been a couple years since I've done a video on it. So as I was packing this pack up, I realized that I wanted to make a video on this, show you guys the contents of my pack. A lot of things have changed since the last time I did a video. Now, a couple years ago, I was doing uh, I think I had my REI lookout pack, which was heavy and um, just a much heavier system. A lot of extra gear, a lot of things I just didn't need to take along. For this trip coming up next weekend, I will be taking the minimal amount of stuff that I possibly can to keep as light as I possibly can. So that means um, I'm not taking any extra clothes. I'm not taking any extra accessories or gear that I will not be using. Uh, I'm just keeping it very, very minimal. I'm keeping it down to the, you know, I have one light. I have <laughs> one extra piece of rain gear. I have um, just the minimal amount of insulation. So I need to preface this video with the fact that this is a deep summer loadout. Okay, so this is my 9.6 pound base weight. That is before food and water. So what that basically means is uh, probably another five or six pounds after I've filled up my water bottles, added my, my snacks and meals and everything. Um, and I want to preface this with one other uh, additional thing that I'm not including in this loadout, which is my electronics bag. Because I think most of you out there could emulate this pack, but because of all the extraneous electronics gear that I bring for filming for the channel, I'm not going to factor that in because that's not really... Um, applicable to everyone so I'm, I'm leaving that out that's probably an additional pound of gear talking about the cameras cords battery chargers uh, all kinds of fun stuff uh, that I'm extra and I'm actually bringing I am bringing on this trip uh, one luxury item maybe two luxury items one is a little USB powered fan that plugs into my phone I'll hang my phone from my ridge line with the rubber band or something um, and then turn that little fan on and keep me cool at least till I can fall asleep. Um, it's going to be probably lows in the 70s, so we're talking highs near 90s, lows in the 70s. It's going to be hot. It's going to be a hot trip. So that's why I said I'm not bringing any extra insulation for this one. Um, I'm just bringing a 50 degree top quilt my Costco quilt, but I'll, I'll show you that. So let's get, let's get into the contents of the pack. Let me show you what, what I've got here. This is the ULA CDT pack. I love this pack. It was a good price. It's, it's lightweight, it's frameless. Uh, it's very comfortable. I, I think I find it a very quality pack and just, it, it works out great for me. I do have a extra beaner that I hang off here just in case I, I have a beaner break or something. Uh, I'm, I find I always need beaners, <laughs> and you'll see it here in, in my kit here as I show you. Um, so, what do I have here on the outside? Let's start with the mesh pocket here on the outside. This is the outside mesh pocket. This is basically exposed to the outside. I'm not going to use a pack cover. Um, so, if this stuff gets wet, it's okay. That's perfectly fine. It's exposed to the elements. So, what I have here in my top part of my mesh pack, uh, right here, this is my Frog Togs rain jacket, super lightweight, very, very nice, works very well. This is basically the only extra piece of insulation I'm going to have to keep me warm and dry uh, if I absolutely essentially need it. If it's a downpour and it's cloudy, it could cool down, uh, at least briefly. I like these Frog Togs jackets a lot. The only thing I don't really like about them is they are very paper thin. They tear easily. I've, I've gone through two of these now. Uh, they just they shred so be very very careful with them Also in this mesh pocket. This is my piece of Tyvek. This is my ground sheet. I find these very very useful uh, super light watery waterproof basically and Just a great place to put your gear at night if you put your keep your shoes on the ground underneath your hammock or whatever I, I like the Tyvek but I am looking at a piece of gear that uh, Kiva Outdoors is working on, which is a ground sheet that's stakeable. That's the only, my only complaint about this is I, I can't really keep it staked down. Uh, I could put some holes and grommets in it and all that stuff. 
I'm, I'm just too lazy to do that, so. Also up in here is my, this is my 12 foot Hennessy hammock hex tarp. This is the one you've seen in all my previous videos. I'm still using this to this day. I will probably get a lighter tarp maybe next year. I splurged all my money on a new hammock system this year, so uh, a, a tarp wasn't in the cards. This thing works great as it is. Uh, I, I keep all my uh, zingit line attached to the corners, and then I just stake it down. It's, it's kept me warm and dry and safe for years now. It's a fantastic piece of gear, but it is heavy. It's around 20 ounces, so probably one of the heaviest pieces of gear in this bag. And I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything in this outer mesh pocket. Now, this side pocket right here, also exposed. So it's this stuff's going to get wet if it gets rained on. And here I keep my Sawyer, the original Sawyer squeeze with a water bag. I'm looking to replace these Sawyer squeeze bags with a CNOC or a... Um, ever new bag like uh, Jason over at Frozen uh, Outdoor Adventures uses. Uh, but I went to look for them and I can't find them anywhere. Seanock uh, bags are unavailable. The ever new bags are unavailable. They're just completely, everything's sold out right now. But uh, if, if any of you use these things, you know how much these suck to fill up. They're absolutely a pain in the butt, but it, it works. Um, and of course the Sawyer is a fantastic piece of gear. So that's fantastic. What I also keep in this side pocket right here is my, if I can get it out here, this is my uh, fuel canister right here. This is a, what is this one? This is a Coleman. I have Ollie Camp ones. I have Sterno. I have MSR. I have multiple brands of these things. But this is a, this is a larger one. This is the 250 uh, self-sealing. And uh, it's about half full. This is going to do me just fine for two days out in the woods. So just me alone is perfectly fine so that's it for that side other side pocket right here are my water bottles and these are just smart water bottles like everybody else uses I've got the flip caps on them two of these large ones and that's what that's gonna be what I use to carry my water now if you've been down to the gorge you know that there are places in the gorge where there are no uh, water sources so I'm gonna be packing in those full hopefully that will keep me if I have to hike somewhere and acquire water then I'll I'll have to make that trek but hopefully I won't have to necessarily go get water so these are the hip belt hip belt pockets right here I don't keep a whole lot in these because they're so small and kind of hard to access in my opinion and here I'm gonna keep this is my Princeton Tech headlamp this is the sink headlamp it's heavy but it's a good quality headlamp and I really really like it a lot it's got multiple different modes it's got the red light and it's got a lock to keep it from getting accidentally turned on so it's a great piece of gear that is my headlamp no it's not a uh, ultra light headlamp but it is perfectly fine for what I do also in this pocket is my <laughs> cheapy little compass uh, this is a Silva Starter 123 compass. I've had this thing probably 15, 20 years. It's the only compass I've ever really needed. I've never really had to pull out a compass with my map, so knock on wood, I, I probably won't have to use it. But I do carry it just in case. In the other pocket over here, I'm going to store... This is my Sawyer right here. This is the Picardin in a nice little size bottle. I want to keep my bug spray readily accessible. Picardin is good stuff. You can spray that and apply it right to your skin and it works fantastically. Unlike permethrin, which you will treat your clothing with, you, this you can apply to yourself. But it's safer than DEET and it's just a nice product. I like it a lot. All right, so let's go inside the pack. In the very top here, what I have clipped in is my cheapy little one dollar folding sit pad from aliexpress these things aren't the best quality in the world this one's kind of falling apart but it works i like it better than trying to take the foam pad out of this pack like some people would do because 
that's a pain to get in and out and it's pretty thin piece of foam this is relatively thick it's about a half inch thick and it will um, you know give me some cushion inside my pack let's just go right in shall we all right this right here is a vaults bag uh, these are called vaults they're little mesh bags i got the, i think i got these at meyer stores they come with a little clip on them they're pretty nice they're not super lightweight but they're fairly lightweight they're they're you know a few ounces i think uh and here's my entire kit my fire kit i am taking my fire kit because i would like to have a fire at least one night there's just something about having a fire when you're out in the woods i always enjoy it and i find it just relaxing especially when i'm by myself i kind of like that that warmth feeling of being by the fire so uh, i think that'll be relaxing and enjoyable to have a fire in this Ziploc bag here is the entire contents of my hygiene kit. So I have a deuce of spades. I have a uh, um, light load towel. I have some towelettes. I have some wilderness wash. Just a nice collection of stuff in there. Um, pretty minimal hygiene kit, but I do take a hygiene kit with me, of course. Next is my cook kit. Cook kit is very, very simple here in the summer. I keep it very, very minimal. And what I'm doing this time, I'm not even taking a mesh bag to pack it in. I'm literally just taking my Tokes 650 milliliter titanium pot, keep it wrapped with a silicone band. You can get these anywhere. These are like those little wristbands that you wear. And then inside is my MSR Pocket Rocket 2. Inside there, I have a lighter, and I do carry one other item. Uh, this is a pot stand. I this is this is um, a jet boil pot stand. It's made out of plastic. It's probably un completely unnecessary, but I've had so many times where I've been able to find a level spot to put my pot, and I just if I would have had a pot stand, it would have solved all my problems. I would have been able to cook a lot faster. So I always carry this thing now. It fits perfectly in my pot along with my stove and I don't leave home without it at this point. This right here of course is empty. This is my food bag right here. This is what I'm going to be using for my food bag kit. Uh, you know a couple lunches, a couple meals. I don't need a whole lot. This is a dry bag. This is one of those Walmart dry bags. Uh, not a fancy Cuban fiber one. Maybe next year I'll buy one of those because I know they're lighter but this is the outdoor products one. These work great. I have no problem with these, honestly. They've kept everything dry. You clip it together, and what I can do is clip my uh, system together right there. I can clip my beaner right there, hang it from a tree, boom, good to go. This is my um, steak bag and hammock hanging bag. I keep it in here instead of on the outside because I realized that my stakes are very, very sharp. And they actually punctured through this little bag. Uh, I guess I need something a little bit stronger, but the, the, the titanium stakes I have are super, super sharp. But I keep everything in here, titanium stakes, my straps with the Dutch beetle buckles and the Dutch um, clips. I have a piece of cordage in there for which of course is my continuous ridge line zing it for my tarp. I have another piece of zing it, which is my bear line and for hanging my food bag. Then I'm bringing along an additional piece of cordage for this trip, which I'll be using to hang the bag on a tree using the uh, Marlin spike hitch. It's a little trick I learned from uh, Intense Angler had a really cool video on how to do this. You basically just find a stick you, you use a marlin spike hitch, wrap it around the tree, and you put the, the straps um, around that. So I found that that's a really, really good idea. It works really well. It makes getting in and out of the pack really super easy. So I'll be doing that method on this trip. 
one other thing, I think. Oh, this is my <laughs> titanium spoon. That'll go in my food bag. Right now it's loose. This is my little tiny med kit from Kiva Outdoors. And I'll do a separate review on this, but this is a fantastic piece of gear. My buddy Devin over at uh, Kiva Outdoors, Backcountry Exposure, he makes these and sells them. And this is the Hexon version, super light, very, very nice, water resistant, not waterproof, but that's fine. And in here I keep all kinds of stuff, including bandages, moleskin, I have a tick key, I will keep extra batteries in there, uh, I have some patching materials for gear and things like that. So it's just kind of my all around med repair kit, safety kit. And I do have some uh, drops, Aquamira drops in there as well for water treatment in case something happens to my Sawyer. So redundancy is very, very important in my opinion. Okay, that's all the loose articles in the bag. Next, at the bottom here, this is everything that's gonna go in the bottom. I keep the stuff that I absolutely have to have dry in a Nyla Flume bag. Now this is a tip from Outdoor Adventures. He turned me on to these, and man, these things are fantastic. They are super light, super strong, very, very cheap, a couple dollars, and I absolutely recommend it. Now I used this when I was in Grayson Highlands with Jason Helmendaler, and I just kept this in my pack. We had two straight days of torrential rain under a tropical system, and this kept my stuff perfectly dry. I, it was, and all I did was just twist it. Uh, I did have rubber bands on it, but I don't even need to do that at this point because of the way I'm, I'm just keeping it stuffed down inside the pack. In this Nyla Flume bag is my hammock. This is my hammock this is my dream hammock raven with bug net and that's basically all there is to it super compressible you know super lightweight i've done a review on this love this hammock so much i can't wait to bring that out now like i said it's going to be a warm weather trip so i'm not bringing bottom insulation normally i will carry my wilderness logics under quilt which is a 20 degree under quilt that's complete overkill for this trip. It's not gonna get below 70 degrees, so I'm not bringing under insulation. Only thing I'm bringing for the top of me is this, my double black diamond Costco down quilt. This thing goes down to 50 degrees easily. Everybody knows out there, I think, how great these things are. Absolutely super compressible, super warm, very nice quality. That's gonna be my insulation for this trip. That's all I need for a summer overnight trip. And that is it for the contents of this ULA pack, guys. So that's uh, under 10 pounds worth of gear for summer hiking. Now, what I didn't include in this loadout weight is my clothing. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be wearing. I'm not bringing any extra socks or anything like that. All I'm bringing for this trip is um, what I'm wearing on my body. So this will be the shirt that I'm wearing. This is a Mountain Hardware Tech shirt. One of my favorite pieces of gear. Mountain Hardware shirts are just great. They fit me really, really well. They they fit great up here. They fit great around my midsection, my, my, my gut that kind of sticks out. They're not real super tight. They're kind of loose fitting and they, they wick moisture away fantastically. This is one of my favorite shirts. It's going with me on this trip. A pair of socks. I'm taking one pair of socks. These are just Adidas uh, synthetic shirt uh, socks uh, that I wear basically everywhere. I wear these running, hiking, whatever. Um, I haven't gotten any blisters from them. You know, they're just shorty socks, but they work great. In addition to the socks, I'll be wearing uh, these Ultra Gaiters over my socks. So these will uh, keep me protected from ticks and stuff like that. These things work fantastically. I love these Ultra Gaiters. Not quite as good as the Dirty Girl I, I found, but um, these are great. So
also be taking a buff. I love my buff. Use this thing every summer. I use it in the winter as well, but I use it in the summer a lot. Uh, great for moist, uh, wicking moisture away. I, I wear it as a hat, I wear it as a bandana. I use it to wipe sweat away. Uh, I use it as a pot holder when, it's, uh, when I'm boiling water. Fantastic piece of gear. I don't go anywhere without this buff anymore. Love it. These are gonna be my undershorts here. These are a pair of spider uh, compression undershorts. They're, more, of course, they're synthetic. I, I got a great deal on these. Um, you know, normally Spider's a pretty expensive brand, so I don't, I wouldn't buy them. But I went to Marshalls. Uh, if you guys have a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls, places like that, Marshalls is actually owned by uh, Sierra, or they own Sierra Trading Post. So every once in a while I'll go in there and they'll have outdoor gear at a super reduced prices. So they had a three pack of these spiders for like $6. And these are absolutely awesome. They're so, they're silky and they're just fantastic. These are way better than the Walmart ones that I had been wearing, the, the starter ones I'd been wearing for a long time. And they were actually cheaper than the Walmart ones I bought. So I paid, you know, like I said, six bucks for three pairs super awesome brand uh, treat these with permethrin and uh, actually i'll spray all these things i'm showing you with permethrin down to my underwear i found that keeps the ticks away i have not had any problems with ticks so far this year i've been very very fortunate treating my stuff with permethrin and then using picardin on my skin haven't had any problems with bugs with ticks or anything over the top of those underwear i will be wearing Another item that I got at Marshall's, <laughs> become my favorite place actually. Uh, these are a pair of Asics running shorts. Uh, these have become my, my go-to hiking shorts because they're super vented and super lightweight. They weigh nothing and they, moist, they wick moisture away like it's nothing. But they have these holes down at the bottom that vent straight up through so they don't feel like you're wearing heavy shorts. These things are fantastic. I absolutely love these. And these are my summer go-to shorts now. So I'll be hiking in these and I'll love them. Finally, down to my footwear, my Ultra Lone Peak 3.0s. I've got these really well broken in now. Absolutely love this shoe. Super lightweight. These weigh something like 10 to 12 ounces for the pair. Uh, they are great when they get wet. They dry super fast and they're so roomy in the toe box. Man, I love these shoes. I absolutely, these, these are my favorite. These are just super fantastic. And they work great with the gaiters. I wear the gaiters over the top of them and it's fantastic. In addition to that, I have uh, my road ID, which my wife got me for Father's Day. Uh, I keep that now on my laces of my shoes. Uh, it's got my personal information, phone number, things like that, uh, contact information. In case something happens to me, if I go fall over a cliff or something and somebody finds me, they'll know who to call <laughs> after they call 911, hopefully. And uh, you just get it, it gives my wife some peace of mind having that road ID. I might get another one for my road running shoes, but uh, road IDs, it's a nice thing to have, especially when you're solo hiking. So it's a great, great item to have. All right, guys, that is my loadout for this summer for my middle of summer, super hot backpacking trips. This is what I'm gonna be taking to the Red River Gorge next weekend. I'll be filming that whole experience for you. It's gonna be a great video. It's gonna be a great time. Hopefully I'll get to meet up with some other YouTubers while I'm down there. So it's gonna be fantastic. Really looking forward to this trip. Looking forward to some summer backpacking. It's gonna be awesome. All right, everybody, as always, thank you very, very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, shoot me a comment please i'll be sure to get back to you and give you as much information on all this gear as i can all right guys i'll talk to you soon